I'm James Tanner, and I'd like to welcome you to Quick Views of Genealogy. Welcome to another Quick Views of Genealogy. In this session of Quick Views of Genealogy, we are going to talk about adding outside sources to the Family Search family tree. What I mean by an outside source is a source that is not on FamilySearch.org, but in some other website. So the first thing we need to do is to navigate to FamilySearch.org and sign in to the program. Signing in through the link in the upper right hand corner bring up your sign in screen where you can enter your username and password. If you've forgotten your username and password, you can click on the links to restore that username and password. You will need to have an active valid email account in order to uh, update your password. If for any reason that you, uh, when you originally registered, you've changed your email account, you'll, e you'll either have to go to your old email account or uh, call Family Search Support uh, and get help creating a, a, the account over again uh, with the new email. If you need to create account and, an account and have never ha registered with FamilySearch.org previously, you can do that by clicking on the link in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Okay, once you're signed in, then you'll automatically go to Family Tree. So you'll either click on the link to Family Tree, or when you sign in, you will be taken directly to Family Tree. So this is the, uh, once you're to this point, uh, you need to begin to navigate through the program. Now, before we go on, I'd, I'm going to like, I would like to use a program called RecordSeek.com's Tree Connect. You see the link there to RecordSeek on the, uh, to RecordSeek on the screen. I'm going to install that Tree Connect program in my browser, and then I'm going to use that program to uh, attach a, a external uh, source record to Family Tree. RecordSeek.com's Tree Connect program semi-automates the process of adding outside, outside sources to Family Tree. So now we're going to go to the program live. Take just a second here. And I've uh, navigated to RecordSeek.com and I see a large green button here in the, in the center and all I have to do to install this free program on my browser is to click and drag that uh, button up to uh, my browser bar. Once that's installed, now I've navigated here to Family Search Family Tree and you need to find uh, one of your ancestors who needs uh, some sources. Uh, that shouldn't be too hard to do since most of the sources are missing for the program. Here's uh, go out to my great grandfather. And choose one of his family members who uh, doesn't have uh, very many sources. One of my uncles, Roland C. Tanner. And scroll down in the as individual screen here to the point where it shows sources. And I see here that there is one source for the United States Census from 1940. A little tree over here on the side of the census uh, indicates that this came from FamilySearch.org and not from the uh, internet. If it would come from the internet, there would be a world, a little icon for the world here. So now I, I need to add a source. I could create a new source here, uh, find a source external, create it, copy and paste the information into uh, a new source field by clicking on add a source, and then they have a form that comes up. But rather than split my screen or, or copy and paste, I'm gonna use Tree Connect that I just installed to uh, to find and automate the process of adding that source to uh, this particular family member. 
let's assume that I need to look for uh, a source, and I do find one. In this case, I went out to the Find a Grave website. That's findagrave.com and searched for my ancestor. And I put a click link here for uh, United States and I'm entering Arizona and Maricopa County and doing a search. Okay, there's uh, a link here to Roland C. Tanner in uh, Greenwood Cemetery over in Phoenix. That's probably the right one. Just check here real quick. Um, yes, this is my great uncle, uh, Roland Tanner, and he is buried over in the uh, Greenwood Cemetery. Now, because I installed Tree Connect, I can do something uh, quite interesting. I'm going to highlight the text that I would like to include in my source. So I want to include all of this information from, fam from Find a Grave in my uh, source reference on Family Tree. Now, I'm not copying it or, or uh, going up to the Command C or, or going up to the menu and doing a copy. I'm just highlighting it. Highlighting tells uh, Tree Connect that I'd like to include that information in my, in my source. So now simply uh, one more step. What I really need to do here is uh, go back to uh, Roland Tanner and copy his person identifier number from family search family tree. I did that by highlighting it and then using a keyboard command, uh, command C to copy that. I could also use uh, the menu bar command of copy. I did that because I'm going to be asked for that number by Tree Connect. So now I'm ready to click on the Tree Connect link in the menu bar. When I do that, it will ask me to sign in to um, Family Search Family Tree again. Now what happens is that TreeConnect automatically adds that source to the, a source box, a source um, form, and all of the information, cons and including a, uh, the link to the website, and everything that I have copied or highlighted in the, uh, in the selection will also be copied to the, uh, to the description notes of the source. So now all I have to do is click Save. Here's where I get to use the uh, PIN number. I could search for him by name, but rather than do that, this simplifies the process because I know I have the exact person and I don't have to worry about getting the wrong person. Now I indicate that that's the correct person. Click on Attach that person's record and close this window. Now I'm through with this source. I could, of course, go on and add in additional people to my database. There's other links here on Find a Grave that I could uh, add for his wives. Okay. Now we're back to uh, Family Search Family Tree. I've been navigating by adding tabs here to my browser rather than opening new windows. Um, you can do whatever you feel is, is uh, most uh, efficient, but I think adding tabs works well. Now, if I go and look here at the uh, record that I created that I was just looking at for Roland Tanner at the sources, that source is still not there. The reason is because this window has been open the entire time, and what I need to do is right-click and reload this screen. When I reload the person the uh, personal record here for Roland Tanner. We now will have the Find a Grave Memorial link. And when I click on that, I'll have all the information, including everything I copied from the Find a Grave uh, entry. 
and a link directly to the Find a Great page. So clicking on that will open the source and take me right back to uh, Roland C. Tanner's entry. Now, Tree Connect works well with many websites. You might uh, think about it for a minute if you try to do a connection to a subscription site such as Ancestry.com. Uh, you may, what will happen is that if the person who uh, then tries to go look at that record does not have a, a subscription to the program, they won't be able to see the, the, uh, the link. So it's a good idea to try to use links and sources on the internet that are um, available to everyone without subscription. Additionally, uh, as we all know, internet addresses can change. Uh, in this case, we may want to look for websites that use what are called permalinks or links, permanent links to the internet right directly to a document. These are not very common yet on the internet, but are getting more common as time goes on. Uh, just recognizing that some links may go out of date, especially if a, if a website disappears or if a particular document is removed from, from the database. Well, thank you for uh, listening to another quick view on genealogy, and I hope this helps you add some sources to FamilySearch FamilyTree.